Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to discuss the most common analytical functions in Oracle SQL. These are the most important functions, especially for data engineers. Sooner or later, every data engineer will have to use them. You also might get them in an interview, especially the row count analytical function. It's pretty difficult to be asked to apply row count during an interview. Although these are Oracle functions, there are similar functions in other databases like Postgres, Microsoft, etc. etc. So it's not a waste of time if no, you are not using Oracle. You might wonder what is the difference between the aggregate functions and the analytical functions. The aggregate functions group the results and return an output for the whole dataset. On the other hand, analytical functions return the aggregated result for each record in the dataset. I will demonstrate the difference between those two in the first couple of examples and then we will proceed with the analytical functions. You can download the dataset from the Oracle website. I downloaded the employees dataset. If we run this query, you will notice the employee ID, first name, last name, email, phone number, job ID, salary, etc. etc. So the first example is to find the average salary per department. We can do that by using a group by clause and group by department ID and calculate the average salary with the average function. So now we are using an aggregate function. If we run this query, you will notice the average salary for each department, which is great. But if we want to also see the first name of the employee, we won't be able to do that with an aggregate function. If I add the first name and run a query, it will give me an error. It's not in the group by expression. So if I add the first name in the group by statement, you will notice that we calculate the average for each employee, which is not what we want. We want the average for each department and also display the employee. This is where analytical functions come in handy. They give you this option to calculate the average for each department ID, but also be able to display other information like employee ID and first name, or whatever columns you want to choose. The syntax for the analytical function, here it's average because we want average. We specify the column we want to calculate the average of, like salary in this case, over open bracket partition by department ID, so because we want the average salary for each department, order by first name in this case, but you can use whichever column you want for the order by clause. If we run this statement, you will see the average salary for each department ID and also the first name and employee ID for each employee. Moving on, we have the count function. We need to find the number of employees per department. We can achieve that by using a group by clause and go by department ID and count the employee ID. So if we run this query, we will get the number of employees per department. However, we cannot display any other information or any other columns. But in this case, let's say we want the employee ID also and the last name. So we need to use the analytical function, the count analytical function. We count the employee IDs over and we have to partition by the department ID because we need the number of employees per department, right? If we run the analytical function, you will see that we get the count for each department plus the last name, the salary, and the employee ID. So we display more information than the information that we are grouping by. This is when we have to use an analytical function when we want to display more information than the one we specify in the group by clause. Now that we know when to use analytical functions, let's proceed with the next one, which is the rank function. We have to assign a rank to employees in department 60 from lowest salary to largest. In order to achieve that, we need to use the rank function over partition by the department ID and order by salary ascending order. If we don't specify the order, by default it's ascending. Let's run the query and see what we get. And we assigned a rank for each employee in this department, in department 60, 
as you can see the salary the first salary we assigned rank one to the lowest salary rank two to the second lowest salary and the same rank to the third lowest salary because they are the same amount when we have two employees with the same salary we assign them the same rank so employee with employee id 105 and 106 they have been assigned rank two because they have the same salary but we skip the next rank next rank for the next employee so employee with last name ernst has rank four instead of rank three if we don't want to skip rank for the next employee we have to change rank into dense rank so the syntax is the same but instead of rank we have to use the dense rank function we partition again by department id and we order by salary and we filter for department id equals 60. so if i run this query you will notice that employee with last name ernst has then dense rank 3 instead of dense rank 4 like before most often than not you're going to use dense rank instead of rank in real case scenarios the next function is the sum function which returns the cumulative amount of a column let's say we want the sum of the salary department wise so we use the sum function for the salary column and we partition by department id let's run the query and as you can see in the last column we get the cumulative amount for each department so for department with id 90 if we add 2400 plus 1700 plus 1700 we get 5800 moving on we have the max and the mean functions they are self-explanatory if we want to find the largest salary per department we have to use the max function for the salary column and we partition by department id let's run this query and we get the maximum salary for each department in this case for example department with department id 90 has a maximum salary 2400 conversely if we want to find the lowest salary department wise we need to use the mean function and we have to partition by department id running this we are getting the minimum salary department wise for this department is 1700 in the next scenario we need to find the lowest salary department wise but using the first function this time this is a bit a little bit more complex we have to use an aggregate function mean max or sum or etc etc for the column we want and then keep this is the keyword keep open parenthesis dense rank and we are getting the first element so this is why the order by here plays a significant role because we are getting the first element of course we have to partition by department id if i run this query you could see again we are getting the lowest salary per department respectively if we want to find the largest salary department wise again using the last function we need to use an aggregate function again max mean or sum etc etc for the column we want the keyword keep and then we open bracket we use dense rank and we are getting the last order by salary so we are getting the last element and then we have to partition by department id running this query and we are getting the results we expected 2400 for this for department with department id 90. you can achieve the same results using the mean and the max functions but i wanted to demonstrate the first and the last functions as well then next is the median function it's like average but when you want to find the median it's pretty self-explanatory if i run the query we are getting the median for each department id of course we partition by department id again two of the most important functions are the lag and the lib functions the lag function is used to display the salary of the previous record we need to use the keyword lag the salary column over and we have to order by employee id if we skip the order by close it's going to give us an error order by is essential in this case usually we use partition by as well but it's not necessary so if i run this query for this job id you could see the previous salary here is nulled 
Why? Because there is no previous salary, so we are getting null. But line number two, the salary is 9,000, which is correct because the previous salary, as you can see, is 900. 8,200, again, if you check line number two, 8,200. Of course, we don't display the last salary, the 6,900 here. Conversely, we use the lead function in order to display the salary of the next record. Instead of lag, we use the lead keyword here and we order by employee ID. Let's run a query and see the results. The next salary is 8200 and if you check line number 2, it's 8200, that's correct. Of course, the last next salary is null because there is no next. In the next example, we have to concatenate all the values in the last name column department-wise for department 100. In order to do that, we need to use the list ag function. We have to specify the column we want. Here it's last name. The separator, I used comma, but you can use whatever delimiter you want. The within group keywords in order to define the order. So we order by employee ID. And of course, we partition by department ID. Let's see the results we get from this query. In the new column, as you can see, it's a comma separated list of all the last names in this department. Last but not least, we have the row number function, which happens to be the most important and commonly used analytical function. It is used to number records partitioned by certain columns. Let's say we want to find the minimum salary for departments 60 and 90. We can achieve the same result using, of course, the mean function or the first or the last functions. However, let's demonstrate the same, how you get the same results using the row number. We have to use row number function here over partition by department ID and order by salary ascending order. Let's run the code. You can see the new column has a sequence of number for each department ID. It starts over when the department ID changes. For example, here we have assigned one for the lowest salary for this department ID, then two for the second lowest, and three for the third lowest, etc., etc. And then we start over again using one for the lowest salary for this department. But we want the minimum salary for those departments, which means we need to select the records where the row number equals one so line number one and line number six since those records have the lowest salaries for those departments and we can do that by having an outer query we select from the inner query where the row number equals one if we run this we will get those two records which display the lowest salary per department that's all for today in my experience, average count, lead, lag, row count, and dense rank are the most useful functions and probably what most data engineers use daily. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are new, click the like button and subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one.